We're in London, it's Wimbledon time, and the draw has been released. The big news being, Yannick Sinner, the new world number one, is on the same side as Carlos Alcaraz. Bad news for them too. And of course, Novak Djokovic. He will be playing Wimbledon. He is the number two seed. He avoids an Alcaraz and Sinner until the final. This is our draw reaction. Sit back and get ready. Yes, it is Wimbledon time, everybody. It's our favourite time of the year, and it's because it's in London where we are based, and we cannot wait for this grass court slam to get started. Well, it seems like a long time since last year when Alcaraz was lifting that trophy against Novak Djokovic in the final. One of the most epic finals we've seen and Alcaraz proving that he can play on the grass and he can win slams on other surfaces. Since then, he's come on. He's won Roland Garros as well. He's won a slam on every surface. But the big favourite coming into this tournament is the world number one, the best player on tour in 2024, and that is... Yannick Sinner. So I'm looking forward to seeing who they have to play, their routes to the final, and we'll be giving you our thoughts on how we see them getting on in this year's draw. I agree with what you say in that Yannick Sinner is the favourite. However, I don't agree that he's the big favourite. I think certainly now after seeing the draw, he certainly isn't. I think it's a tough draw for Yannick Sinner. Some of the matches he's got to play early doors against Berrettini in the second round is horrible. You've got a Greek spore in there as well. Um, we'll speak about that in more detail in a second. But really, the big winner from all of this is going to be Novak Djokovic. Avoiding the big two in Alcaraz and Sinner until a final is so helpful to him. I think uh, probably the best place to start is speaking about how he's got here because there was a lot of people yourself included, who thought there's no chance he's going to play. I thought that maybe initially when we heard about the surgery, but the moment he arrived in London, I just knew he was going to play. It is mm. official as of, I think, yesterday pretty much. Uh, but today, the draw's there. He's there practicing. He's looking good. And based off what Fritz said, he seems not at all surprised that Djokovic is back. Of course, Taylor Fritz is someone who had the same surgery in 2021. And he's pretty um, not shocked by the news that he's back so soon. And the recovery time wasn't that bad. It varies between the severity of the injury. And it seems like Djokovic's one wasn't that bad, really, all in all. <laughs> well, I'm praying that it doesn't get aggravated but he's got the best team around him that's the one thing we have to remember about Djokovic the people like him the Dow Federer they're gonna have the best doctors on hand the best scientists the best recovery people so if even if it is bad to an extent they can get it back to a, a certain state where he can play a first round of a slam and then they can see how it goes and he normally is okay for the first couple of rounds at Wimbledon anyway. He, I mean, he's got the game to be able to beat most of the players on the tour, probably at about 50%. So I, th I think this has always been the case, though, Ben, but this is a different Novak Djokovic. We're coming into July at yeah. Wimbledon, and he's not won a tournament yet. Not made a final. He's not made a final. He's not done particularly well in the Grand Slams. Yeah. His Australian Open against Yannick Sinner was really career, um, what's the word? Defining? Shaping, defining, that's the word. Yeah. It defined him, I feel. I feel like it just, we saw like a shift from that moment of Sinner being able to beat him so comfortably, not look the same since. Because I think he was playing very well up until that in, up until that match. And there yep. was no doubts about his level. He was looking like a big favourite. People would have been thinking he's a favourite for this one. Roland Garros was one of the worst slams I've seen from him in recent times. Granted, he got through these five set matches and showed some incredible tennis at times, but he beat, no disrespect to them, Lorenzo Massetti and Francisco Solundolo and made really hard work of it. Yeah. Extremely hard work of it. Based off all of that, is there confidence that he can do well? I know he's had a surgery now. Is he going to be better because of it? I feel 
it's a re- the, the injuries for me are irrelevant in this whole discussion of how he's going to play. I feel a lot of it is focused on the fact that he is struggling to compete with a lot of the other players. And I think he is still good value as a top between five and ten in as a, as a contender to win. But I don't think you're going to win a Grand Slam on the men's if you're between five and ten. It doesn't happen. Usually you are the top five. Yeah. Uh, that it has to be these days. I mean, it's not the same as the women's. Maybe you can get someone from a five to ten, and the women's who win. You're up against though. I mean, you're up against probably they're they're the next like the next gen who have come through, and now they are the best players on tour. Alcaraz and Sinner. You just don't want to come up against them because you have to play a hundred percent if you're Djokovic when you play them, because otherwise you'll lose. And he's witnessed that firsthand. And um. I'm a little bit worried about him just because I know it's just one of those things, isn't it? Like he's coming into another draw. There's more questions around him. He's got lucky. He doesn't have Alcaraz on his side. But there's look, he was caused trouble by Musetti. He was caused trouble by Solundolo. That was at Roland Garros. I'm a bit worried because, well, the only thing on his side here is the serve is normally more prevalent on the grass and he has one of the best serves on the tour when it's popping. So I think if he's managing to get through these early rounds with keeping the movement to a minimum, then we might see him just grow into the tournament and uh, maybe it's it's working well, the knee, come say the third or fourth round and then we get to see real full Djokovic come the second week. Yeah, he's he's very happy the fact that he is the second seed. Of course, that happened because Alcaraz lost to Jack Draper. I believe if Alcaraz would have won that match, then he would have remained as number two. So very pivotal, really. And Jack Draper's had a lot to say. Uh, let's get into the draw. Enough, enough yapping. And we'll start with Yannick Sinner's section because he is yeah. the number one. He is the bookie's favourite. You've got him, favourite, and then Alcaraz in second, Djokovic as third, favourite. Yeah. So if we look at it instantly, it's a first round match. Uh, is this right, Ben? This is this is just the seeds I'm putting up, just so you can see oh, okay. who is in say. The, who's in the first <laughs> half. So let's analyze just who's in the first half, really. Okay. And this is the Sinner Alcaraz half. Obviously, the top section there you can see all the way down to Daniel Medvedev. This is Sinner's quarter. So we've got Talon Grigsbor in there. We got Jarry in there. That's not good at all. Ben Shelton. These are just the seeds, by the way. We got Grigor Dimitrov, another informed player. Manorino, uh, Zhang, and Medvedev, all in the quarter Gosh. of Yannick Sinner. And obviously, you mentioned Berrettini's in there as well. I mean, the seeds you do want on this surface are the ones which uh, Alcaraz have: TFO, low on confidence. Yeah. Uh, Bublik. No, yeah. sorry, not Bublik so much. Well, I think he's quite dangerous. Miss. But he's a bit hit. He's not, not the end Tommy of the world Paul, to have. Though. Kasper Rude is probably one of the best seeds you can get. He can't play yeah. on grass. He's not very good and at moment. all. A Baez. These are the ones you want. You don't want the ones which Sinner's got. Initially, you're looking at this, and Sinner's draw is a lot harder than Carlos Alcaraz is. Um, but one thing I would say is he does have Tommy Paul, who I would say, aside from Sinner and Alcaraz, is the best player there. Tommy Paul will be rubbing his hands together right now. This is a real opportunity for the Queen's champion to come through. And if he's able to get into a match against Alcaraz, he fancies chances. He's yep, beaten so, Alcaraz yeah. before. And on this surface, when he's when he's playing the way he is, if Alcaraz is low on confidence or not playing his top tennis, he could be there for the taking. I mean, if he does go out, I mean, Yannick Sinner probably fancy his chances more should he get to a semi-final against the likes of Tommy Paul, I think, than he would against Carlos Alcaraz. And, of course, you've got his girlfriend effect as well with Tommy <laughs> Paul. They're supporting him. Yeah. <laughs> you, Strangling sec- him if he can't, if he, does, if he does go out. Well, he's got a bit of a neck problem, I've heard at the moment, Tommy Paul, so hopefully he's recovered from that. <laughs> uh, let's go over to the other half, and we can just have a look at Novak Djokovic's half. Um, and on his half, obviously, is Sasha Zverev. And um, I'd say, at first glance, definitely better than the other half of the draw. That was on Djokovic's part, I'd say. Yeah, I think the big names here who are dangerous is a Fritz, a Draper. Yep. 
Dimonor. Yeah, to a point. To a point. And Zverev. Um, this half is not so tough. But saying that, Djokovic, there's players there who he's been troubled by. And it's always going to be tough in a Grand Slam. That's why the draw, as much as Djokovic will be a little bit happy, I don't think it matters that much. He's not playing well enough, I feel, to... Got her catch in there, though. ...to really... Uh, benefit from a good draw and with a Hubie Hercatch who played so well against him either last year or I think it was the year before maybe last year where there was some tie breaks it was super super tight this year he won't get away with that I put Hubie Hercatch as one of the best grass court players in the world right now he's top five for me and that is who's in his quarter so let's not discount that it is still going to be pretty tough and uh Someone who's probably, I don't know, the top one I think is very open. You're looking at Zverev there as the fourth seed, but looking at them names now on the, with the seeds, I think any of them could go through. I think it's not as bad as it could be for Jack Draper. Even though you see some big names in there, they're beatable big names on grass. That's all I'd say. I think Sitter Pass vulnerable at Wimbledon. Rublev, I think, also vulnerable. I think Sasha Zverev hasn't, hasn't really ever done as well as he should have done at Wimbledon. And I'll have a look here. We've got uh, Taylor Fritz, I'd say, probably the main threat. I mean, I know Massetti did get to the final in Queens, but I'd still, based upon Fritz's like previous performances at Wimbledon, I'd have him maybe higher up on the uh, pecking order than I would for Lorenzo Massetti. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jack Draper, not bad there. Uh, that little section, what do you reckon? Djokovic, he'd be fairly happy, I think, with his bottom uh, I, seat. I make Kubi Hercatch the favourite from that whole section, and I think he's got um, a fantastic chance to make the final of Wimbledon. That's how far I'm going on Hubie Hercatch. Really does, yeah. I mean, if you have a look at that, if he gets all the way to the quarterfinals, beats Djokovic, and then... Goes on. I think he can beat. If he can beat Djokovic, he can beat anybody from the top half of that section. I mean, it's a, it's a quite open this half. I think uh, it's there for the taking, especially with Djokovic uh, coming in, not in good form, bit injured. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested, but I'm interested to see who are the unseeded players that we've got in here. I've got the actual full draw. If you want to have a quick uh, ganders at it, I'll bring it up here. I'll do a bit of a zoom so you can see. Yeah, because I want to see the unseeded players and who's who's where. So if we look at... Do you want to go to... Do you want to go first? Do you want to go to Sinner first or do you want to stay where we are? No, let's let's stick with Sinner. Let's okay, go, let's go, we'll go through it. So, okay. In terms of unseeded, and this is what I wanted to speak about. We've got to speak about his route. It's horrible because you've got a Berrettini and that's the floater nobody wanted. Yeah. Hanfman would be tough. Berrettini, even tougher. He's one of the few players in the draw who can beat anyone if everything goes well. He's yep. got a game without many mistakes. Beats everyone, really. Uh, so dangerous on this surface. Fired a list at Wimbledon. It's his best one by a, by a long shot. Granted, he's not the fittest at the moment, but Sinner's going to not be pleased. I mean, it's horrible. Greek sport, someone who runs yeah. Sinner so close. Very, yeah. very good player. That's another one which is horrible for a Yannick Sinner. Uh, I don't like any of these other names. I don't think Buster's going to do very well. Chapeau, hit and miss. Uh, Outmire, yeah. maybe, if things go well. It's been a bit sick, Jerry, lately. But if he can, if he if he's in full fitness, I think he's a threat as well. He's dangerous. I don't see him doing well here. I don't think <clears throat> Shelton's going to do so well either. Nah. Um, I don't... If I'm we're perfectly honest. In this section, we've got Monfils... But these names aren't going to really trouble. There's another yeah. one who's tough, though. Struff. Is that Struff yeah. Marazan first round? Yeah. Amazing. That's huh? a horrible draw. I know. Terrible for both of them, but... Good for the spectators. This is a match. Yeah. If you are there at Wimbledon, I recommend finding Court 13 or wherever it's going to be yeah. and watching <laughs> Struff Marazan. Yeah, that would be a really... That, I mean, that's one of the picks for sure from just a... First sight in there. We've got Dimitrov versus Lajevic. That's an interesting first round one. But I think if Sinner, it's Battle of the Yannicks uh, in his first match. Yannick Hanfman, Yannick Sinner. Um, I think if he gets past him in, I think it'll be straight sets, to be honest. I think Berrettini, 
he has to turn up and he has to serve well. Otherwise, I think he will receive... Berrettini the... has the ability to uh, beat Yannick Sinner in straight sets. I'm not for me. Not the old no, no, Sinner. No, no, I'm telling you, Ben. He's um, that good on the I, grass. I don't think so. If Berrettini think... all comes together. It's a horrible draw. I think that Yannick Sinner Djokovic now... is very lucky, man, that he's avoiding a, a Berrettini early. I think he could have got him any time. Will be able to overcome someone like a Berrettini, even if he faces adversity. I think I've got so much confidence in Yannick Sinner right now and his ability that even when the chips are down, I think he still pulls out big results. And I think that could be even a whitewash of a straight sets to Sinner victory. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, I, I mean, I am disappointed though because I've just this whole draw has upset me slightly. Yeah. Oh, I really want it going to have an easier one. <laughs> so it's not good for Italy, that draw. Because <clears throat> they, they could have both potentially gone far. So yeah. It's a bit like the Ta- Roland Garros one with Nadal Zverev early, early on. Yeah, I mean, that's just sad. I mean, Alcaraz, nice, easy first round match with against yeah. a qualifier. Sad for Offner. I mean, look, he's been screwed over here. He's right next to Alcaraz in the, in the draw. But he's having a good week. He's in the semi-finals in Mallorca. I mean... He's, he's a grass quarter these days, Offner. We thought it was just a clay quarter. What's happened to him? He's like one of the most consistent players, I think, across some of these slightly yeah. smaller events now. Really happy for him. I hope he wins, Mallorca. Comes in with confidence. Beats Vukic and we get an Alcalaz Offner. Yeah, go check out the video of me and Ben playing with Sebastian Offner on the clay courts. It is quite funny. Uh, and we're returning some of his serves. Really nice guy. Good player, playing in some good form, but horrible draw. And I don't think this draw's that bad for Alcalaz. I'm looking at all of these names. I don't yeah. see Boutique being the same level as when we was at Wimbledon a few years ago. Um, the real tough one's Tommy Paul, and it just feels like if you keep going down, it's a Tommy Paul, Alcalaz section. I don't see yeah. any other name advancing. I don't think Bublik can can hit with them guys. There's a real chance um, in some here. Some of these older players I don't fancy and definitely not rude. So it is between Tommy Paul and Alcaraz. And I think Tommy Paul will be very pleased about that because he's got to a situation where being a 12th seed, he is either the favourite or second favourite to advance and get to the quarterfinals. Oh, well, yeah. especially. Oh, sorry, just... semifinals, isn't it, if he wins this? Especially, yeah, well, if he used to beat Alcaraz. I mean, if he gets... Uh, if he gets through Queens and wins it, you know that he's in great form on the grass. I think that some of these other players that are the unseeded ones are actually more dangerous than the ones who are actually in the seeds. I mean, if you have a look, Jordan Thompson, I think he's probably better than yeah, some agreed. of the seeds yeah. in here. I think Zizou Bergs, watch out for him. He has been he came through qualifying really, yeah. really well. And Yeah, he's Jak- my number one qualifier to watch, by the way, Zizou Bergs. Brilliant. I mean, Jakob Mensik, that's a terrible draw for Bublik. I have to say, that's not somebody you want to be facing right now. And we'll get on to some of the uh, Brits and who they're facing at the end of this one. But Andy Murray, I feel a bit sorry for him as well. He's not got the best draw, but we'll get on to that. I don't think Murray's going to play. Do you not think so? He's still trying to recover. He's doing his best to try and be there. He's committed to playing the doubles, he said, with his brother. Um, But it's it's all hit and miss. I think if he is, he's going to go out early doors. Just quickly, on the, we'll go back a sec. I just sure. want to highlight someone who people won't be talking about, who I know is very good on grass courts, and that is, if you go down, Dominic Kwepfer. He is a really yeah, good grass quarter. That's probably his best surface, and I've watched him there at Wimbledon. I think he can pull together some results, and I think he'll beat Fanini and potentially beat Casper Ruud as well. That would be interesting. I'd like to see him do well. It'd be good. He had a little bit of a wobble uh, in his career. But That's an early back. little pick for me as an indication. I think Kwetfa could surprise some people and go f- and knock out some some big names. Big. Uh, Cam Norrie, obviously not a seed in this draw. And he finds himself in the Zverev and Draper section. I mean, not not great for Cam Norrie, this. But somebody who's been, wasn't it, semi-final before? So. Yeah. Stands a chance. Dan Evans, look, this whole section is filled with Brits. I mean, <laughs> they're not spread them through the draw very well. We, at least we might get one go far, or maybe they all go out early. Who knows? Draper playing Ema, that's a good draw. I think nice early. Uh, I think you'll get a good win there in the first round. Bit of confidence building. And moving up through this one, we've got 
Kaini Shikori in this section. I think Fritz will be happy with this little section as well. Yeah. Well, that's nice. just a pass. Is he finally going to do something good at Wimbledon? I, I don't see it. I'm not. You think Massetti? If you had, if you had to pick a one-handed backhand player out of Massetti and Sissipas, I think he's going to handle it better I think, at Wimbledon. Yeah, I think so. I think he probably has more chance. I think uh, Sissipas actually yeah, a good result on grass the other day. Massetti played well. Yeah, I mean he's looked good. He got to the final of Queens, so he's been very very good form on grass. I was surprised. Corder and Sissipas in this little section they actually just played each other yesterday at Boodles and the exhibition. It went all the way to a final set tie break, and I think uh, Sissipas won eleven nine or something like that Gosh. in the final set tie break. So that one could be a close one. Obviously that was a bit of fun, but. I think Tsitsipas, he won all of his exhibition matches, so he's not in the worst form, but I don't know how much you can really look into it when it's not a competitive tournament. Rublev, I'm still not sold on him on grass courts. I mean, it's a great opportunity for him, but I see him coming up a cropper against at least one of these. I don't see him getting that deep at Wimbledon. I think Tsitsipas would go further than a Rublev. Yeah, I think you're right. But the pass has always done quite well. Remember, we watched him against Kyrgios. And it's a free for all this section, though. It's a, there for the taking. Whoever wants it. Like Sissipas can play well there. Just doesn't seem to ever win them close matches. Yeah, I mean, against that against Kyrgios in that match, it was drama. But yeah, ultimately, just no Kyrgios in the Wimbledon draw. Sad. That's a that's a tough one. Still coming back from injury. Isn't I still it? think that is the that is probably the biggest loss of this Wimbledon not to have Kyrgios there. <sighs> yeah, we got Danasi Kokonakis though. He's there. He's at, and that's a terrible draw for Felix because yeah, yeah you don't want to really want to be playing Kokonakis at a slam early doors because he is one of those players who can knock out uh, some of the bigger players. Her catch be happy. Got Albot, Andy Murray, Thomas Mahatch. Uh, I'm someone who's beaten absolutely Djokovic. no chance, no chance in hell for Andy Murray. It's just a, just a terrible draw. I mean, one of the best young players on tour in Thomas Mahatch. It uh, is so sad because all the fans are going to be really up for it. And if he is to play, I, I have a feeling he's going to pull out. That's really sad. I don't want to see him withdraw during a match or like retire. No, That's I don't gonna, think he's going to play at all. But we'll see. Even worse, um, going down. Having a look at Alex de Menor versus Moutet. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. He's a bit of a banana skin player, Moutet. And Runa versus Kwon. Could that be an early upset? No Remember, chance. this is somebody who took a set off Djokovic, remember? remember? Everyone does at the first match of Wimbledon. Like, it means nothing. What He's do you reckon? sliding around. Paul Jubb having a good tournament at the moment. Yeah, I, I've he not watched ben it, Shelton? but I don't, I don't understand how he's playing so well. It's a bit wow. fair play to him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's good to see some of the British. You've got you banks here. I like that. You'll like this section. Definitely, someone who hit the most winners ever at Wimbledon. Can he do it again? Can well, he do I mean, it this year? He's going to really drop down the rankings if he doesn't go far. By the way. Yeah, quarterfinals last year. I think he goes like 180 in the world or something if he if he loses early. Terrible. So he's defending a lot of points. I think um, his draw is not that bad. I think he, he he should be able to get through a few rounds. So that'll protect some points at least. Vic Capriva for Novak Djokovic in the first round there. I mean, it's a qualifier. I feel like he wouldn't want to play a qualifier because they've already played three matches at Wimbledon and they've got a bit of confidence. Yeah. And I think everyone's going to be feeling extra confident against Djokovic at the moment. He would have rathered anyone but a qualifier, I feel. Yeah, S somebody who's just literally just... Maybe not Berrettini, but apart from Berrettini, <laughs> one of the others would have been quite nice. <laughs> Imagine. I think a wild actually. card would have been perfect, like a nice little fern fernly there. That would have that would have been the equivalent of the Zverev uh, Nadal if he got Berrettini, I think. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, somebody... Poprin, I think he's... A fairly good grass court player, got a big serve. I think Djokovic should be okay. Yeah. Until we see a maybe go up a little bit. Is it Holger Rune? Could Holger no. Rune knock him out? I mean, who do you fancy in that little section? We got Holger Rune will be motivated. I know they're very good friends, Rune yeah. and uh, Djokovic. There was Rune was saying in an interview that 
he was um, going to head to Germany with Djokovic to watch, obviously, Serbia, Denmark. Yeah. Never happened, but they're always talking <laughs> to each other and like really good friends on tour. So, yeah, let's have a look at Djokovic's potential route anyway. So it would be a round one of Capriva, round two of Fernley or Moro Canyas, uh, round three, Echeverri or Poplin, round four, Luna or Hachanov, quarterfinals of her catch, most likely. It's semi-finals of Erev, Rublev, Sitipas, and the final will probably Sina Alcalaz or Medvedev. Yeah, first three rounds, I think, sh should be fine. Um, I don't even put them as the level of some of the opponents in Roland Garros. He probably had tougher matches there. Yeah. Um, and then round four, let's see how Runa performs. I think it will be him there. I don't think Hachalov will make it. And quarterfinals, I think the writing's on the wall. I don't see Djokovic advancing past the quarterfinals. Her catch... Incredible player at the moment. Very tough. And especially if Djokovic isn't playing well in the tie breaks, then uh, Herkatch will have his number there. Let's have a look at Yannick Sinner's draw, just so that we can see how uh, difficult it is. We've got a Hampfman, then Berrettini or Fucevic, Griggs, Bohr, Ketsmanovic, then Shelton or Jarry, uh, Medvedev, Dimitrov or Manolino as a quarter final. Alcaraz semi-final. I don't know why they put rude there. It's just rude to do that. And then a final of either Zverev or Djokovic or her catch. I think you can't put him in there. Yeah, this is a lot tougher, isn't it? I mean, every single Much round tougher. there's problems. You don't have the first three rounds as a cushion. You got a Hampton Berrettini in a Greek spot. I mean, it's horrible. Toughest yeah. draw of the tournament, definitely. I think he's been for being a world number one. Yeah. He's been screwed massively by this draw. It's so tough for Yannick Sinner. But like you say, the best players, does it really matter how tough the draw is? Because if you can win and you're just that good, you'll be okay. But I think this is tough. I th I'm really worried about the Berrettini one. Wow. I think if, if, if Sinner is to go out, it would be early as well. I feel if he is, he's not going to probably lose in a round three or four. But a round one or a two, he could do. How scary is it for everybody else if, you still see Sinner in the draw come the quarterfinals because look who he would have beaten to get there. And if he wins them all in straight sets, everyone's going to be like... Oh, oh massive no. favourite. <laughs> <laughs> we would go down to about 1.5 or something uh, for Yannick Sinner. If he beats all of those players up so bad that Andy's full of confidence, I think Alcaraz will be pooping himself. And uh, Tommy Paul might be... Maybe someone better. We know Sinner's beaten Alcaraz at Wimbledon before and quite convincingly as well. Yeah. So Tommy Paul may be a little bit more of an unknown, uh, especially in his current form. But last up, we'll just look at Alcaraz's. And he's got Layal in the first round. Vukic or Ofner. Hopefully it's Ofner in that second round. TFO or Arnaldi, third round. Umber or Baez in the fourth. Quarters of, I'd say, Tommy Paul uh, or Bublik. Uh, and then semi final Sinner or Medvedev and final Djokovic, Zverev or her catch. Even better. easier than Djokovic's, I think. Yeah. I think this is the, the easiest out of the four seeds. And the reason I say that is because I think the first four rounds he, he won't, he can't lose. Uh, quarter finals is where it gets tough and it's a Tommy Paul. Yep. No guarantee right. Paul gets there, of course. If Paul was to struggle or have a have a slip up which is possible with him he can be a bit inconsistent then Alcaraz is nailed on for a semi yeah he's going to be loving it he won Wimbledon last year he's got the best record I've seen on grass if you look at the win percentages granted it's not nowhere near as many matches as say a Djokovic or a Federer but still he performs well on the grass at the moment he seems to be able to navigate himself uh, on the surface it's a nice draw. It is the nicest draw. He's not going to be troubled for four rounds. Djokovic is not going to be troubled for three rounds. Yep. Let's have a look at some of the potential uh, round three matchups because there are some uh, good ones in here. Jose Morgado's picking out. Maybe Paul versus Bublik. Corda Tsitsipas. Uh, Felix versus Alex de Menor, And Runa versus Hachanov there. Yeah, that's in, is that a first round match? Oh, sorry, Third potential round. round three. I was going to yeah. say that's insane. Some of these ones, but yeah, yeah Paul Bublik. That's one of them ones where Bublik 
could just play incredibly well and Paul's a bit rattled and inconsistent, then he goes out. And if that is the case, Alcaraz will cream Bublik in about an hour and a half. Yeah, I mean, I think so too. Let's go to the more potential round three. I think some of these are interesting too. Sina Kriksbor, again. Medvedev Zhang, again, times two. <laughs> I like the fact he's put that on there. Um, Rude Navone. <laughs> it's just laughing saying this section. I mean, if you get that, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah, that section is a bit up in the air. I think there's a few, that's the clay quarter section. This one's and the best. It's anyone's. The yeah, Zverev. Rublev Massetti and Zverev Draper. Yeah, I mean, if we get Zverev Dr uh, Draper that in a round three, that is the one. Sign me up. I want to see that. I feel like the fans are really going to want Draper to beat Zverev as well. Yeah, most definitely. We've got that whole English versus the Germans and Zverev not being that liked at Wimbledon. I feel like he's going to not Euros get so much love Germany. as he does at <laughs> Roland Garros. Yeah, That's England it. playing Germany at the Euros probably at the same time. We'll, we'll wait and see. Uh, let's just have a look through to see who the Brits are playing in their first round matches. Just to wrap up, we've got Draper versus Ema. Uh, that will be on Tuesday. Nori Diaz Acosta on Tuesday. Evans Tabillo on Tuesday. Murray Mahach. Um, Brody versus Van der Zanschlup. Choinsky versus Darderi. Uh, Billy Harris, uh, he's very happy to be uh, in this one. I think he's in a semi-final as well at the moment, so well done to him. Uh, hopefully he's not tiring himself out ahead of Wimbledon. Ferry versus Altmaier, might be a tough one. Broom versus Vavrinka, <laughs> interesting job. Hopefully we see him go far. He's up against Sebochfield. Fernley against Molo Canyas and Searle against Giron. Tough one there for Searle. Yeah, I think Draper's the one. He's our real hope. Because yeah. he's someone who actually has the ability to go and win Wimbledon. Call me crazy. But he's not far off that top five. If I pick my top five players here, I don't know if he's going to make it in there. But he's between the five and ten with a Novak Djokovic at the moment. I agree. Well, that sums up our draw reaction on the men's side. Make sure to join us later on. We'll be bringing you our reaction to the women's draw too. But tell us your thoughts on this draw in that comment section below. Who do you think has got the toughest draw? Do you think Yannick Sinner is still going to storm the draw despite how difficult it is? And do you think Djokovic is going to pull out? Or is he definitely going to play? What do you reckon? Djokovic is 100% <laughs> playing. Stop playing your silly games. He's there. The injury is not so bad. However, his form is not good. And I'm still not expecting amazing things. He's got a few games to get into it, though. So let's see how he's playing. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Go check us out on Spotify as well, where all of our episodes are on there. And we'll see you for the women's very soon.